Welcome to the solution to the work, power, and energy problem set. Problem number 12. We have a 0.4 kilogram bead slides on a curved wire starting from rest at point A as shown in the diagram below. If the wire is frictionless, find the speed of the bead at point B and at point C. A couple of keys to this problem, probably the biggest one, is the fact that the wire is frictionless. What this does is it immediately indicates to us that we're going to initially start out here with a conservation of energy approach. If that doesn't work or if we don't have enough information, then we would want to think about work energy theorem. But the first one that pops into our head should be the conservation of energy. The other key here is that uh, the bead starts from rest, as you'll see here in a moment. I'm going to color code uh, the answer to A in blue. And we would start off uh, anticipating a conservation of energy approach with the conservation of energy statement that the initial mechanical energy in the system is equal to the final mechanical energy in the system. Clearly, the two spots that we're comparing are uh, the initial mechanical energy at point A and then the final mechanical energy at point B. All right, so at point A, in its initial state, what forms of mechanical energy are possessed by the bead at point A? Is it moving? The answer is no, because it's starting from rest, so there's no kinetic. Is it at a height above a base level in a gravitational field? The answer is yes. We would establish the bottom at point B as the base level at which the height was zero. So it starts out initially at a height above that base level in a gravitational field. So we would write the equation for gravitation potential energy, which is MGH. We will include a subscript O to, to indicate the initial height. That's the only form of mechanical energy possessed in this system initially. So we move on to analyzing the system at the end of the event, and this would be at point B. Is the bead moving? The answer is yes. Therefore, it possesses uh, kinetic energy, the equation for which is 1 half mv squared. Is it at a height above the base level of the gravitational field? The answer is no, because it is at the base level at which the height is zero. We're easily able to move on here in this question. We can see that there's the mass term in uh, the mass expression in both terms, so we can cancel the mass. Pretty neat that this is independent of the mass of the bead. G is 9.8. HO is 5. 1 half V squared. Take whatever algebra steps you need to to solve for B. Pause if you need time. And you should get V to be 9.9 .9 meters per second. Okay, we have our first answer, which is the speed of the bead at point B. I'm going to color code the answer for part B in green. You'll see why I'm doing that in a second. And we suspect, once again, let me see if I can't do these side by side. We suspect, once again, a conservation of energy approach to solving the problem. So we start with our conservation of energy statement. Once again, the spots that we're comparing here are the bead at point A and the bead at point C. At A, once again, no kinetics starting from rest. Is it at a height above the base level in a gravitational field? The answer is yes. But just to show you another approach here, this time I'm going to select the base level to be point C at which I'm determining the height to be zero. So, does it, is it at a height above point C? The answer is yes. So we start with MGHO. Now we compare the, now we, uh, compare the mechanical energies at point C. Is it moving? Yes. Therefore, kinetic, one-half mv squared. Is it at a height above a base level in a gravitational field? The answer, because of the base level I selected, is no. 
I selected point C to be the base level at which the height is zero. Once again, you can see the mass cancels. Substitute, G is 9.8, but our initial height here is not five. Our height above point C, since C is two, two meters from the bottom, would be five minus two, which is three, equals one half B squared. Again, do whatever algebra steps you need to to solve for V. Checking your answer, you should have gotten 7.7 .7 meters per second. The alternative here is with, that we kept for part B here is that we kept B as the base level. This would give you uh, gravitational potential energy at A, which would be uh, MGHO, and the HO value would be 5. And at point C, we would have both kinetic and gravitational potential. So you'd have 1 half mv squared plus mgh at point C. Well, you, you think about that, what you're going to end up doing is subtracting the gravitational potential energy at C from the gravitational potential at A, which essentially was taken care of all in one step by selecting C as the base level to start with. If you don't understand this, ask in class tomorrow before we proceed with questions 13 and 14 in class.